All right, folks, well, we are in the beautiful area of Flagstaff, Arizona. I'm camped here with some friends, and uh, we just got done with Overland Expo West uh, that was in here in Flagstaff, and I'm just going to share with the gear junkies that follow me some of the cool products that I saw. Some of these are products that I personally use, and some of these were just products that um, I thought were innovative and interesting so uh, if you guys are a gear junkie you like to see about products this video is for you if you just like my camping videos um, i am actually currently editing on a cool camping video that i shot in nevada and that'll be coming up hopefully this thursday so anyways for the gear junkies this one's for you and uh check it out all right guys so i'm at expo here and i was happy to actually find the guys here at fireside so if you guys watch my channel for any time in the past like year you know that this fire pit has been my go-to i use it in just about every single video and i'm here with the fireside guys they actually have made quite a few updates and one update was my i only had one complaint really about this uh fire pit and that was the bag here so their new bag is much more durable, heavy duty Kodora, so like great upgrade. But can you tell us a little bit more about some of the other upgrades you guys have made since the one I have? Yeah, definitely. So the biggest upgrade that we brought out was going to be these Dutch oven grates in here. Mm -hmm. So these are what we call our frontier grates. We had a lot of customers who wanted to set a Dutch oven on the uh, fire mesh. The problem was, if, depending on the weight, depending on if you had pegs or anything like that on there, it would start to poke holes in the mesh. So we came out with these originally for those Dutch ovens. It's gonna support all of the weight. And then what's nice about it too is you can actually use logs in here now too, without having to worry about it stretching out your mesh, shortening the lifespan or anything like that. So these are a fantastic little accessory for you, normally $39.95. Um, the next thing is going to be these quad fold grill grates. So, big thing, you're sitting around the fire, you want to have burgers or anything like that, you can actually deploy these real quick right over the top. We can push our coals over to one side or the other depending on the temperature, and then we can actually cook all of our burgers on here, cook up steaks, anything like that. Pull these grates off, throw them to the side, throw a couple more logs on, and then we're eating all of our food right there around the fire. Nice. Yeah, so I'm going to have to probably upgrade and get some of these new features because, like you said, I don't, uh, for me, I really love the portability of this fire pit, and I like that the fact that you can, one of the things I like the best about this fire pit um, against other portable fire pits on the market is you can put real size firewood on here and not some little tiny logs, no small wood, Donald, real big size fire logs so anyways yeah um if you guys haven't checked them out already pop up fire pit make sure you check these guys out you guys get this you guys got them on amazon you can go to your website rei lowe's home depot anywhere that you normally get a fire pit you can find them sweet so check them out my fire pit's favorite fire pit still thanks all right guys i am with colin with esplory esplory so tell them a little bit what you guys do. You guys are do some van build stuff. Yep, yeah, we're a van outfitter, mostly the Mercedes Sprinter. We've created an interior kit for DIY. Uh, we can ship it anywhere in the US. It's all aluminum, uh, weighs less than 225 pounds. Uh, it's ready to go, love to, love to work with you. Yeah, so anyways, if you guys are looking and you know you got a Sprinter, and you're maybe a little overwhelmed about how to build it or something like this. This could be a great option for you because, you know, they do all the fit and everything. So it's basically just kind of like putting Legos together. Yeah, yeah, it's plug and play. We got, we got jigs and instructions and we're always available to talk to you on the phone. All right. Well, cool. It's good great. to meet you. Thanks a lot. All right, guys. So you guys probably know Jerry with Timbo Tusk. You, you guys are probably very familiar with the Scuttle. You guys have seen me use it several times. But the thing I actually want Jerry to show you here is his new bike rack holder for vans. This will really bring it out 48 inches. It'll hold two bikes, and the, which means that you don't have to reach into your van to secure it. Yeah. It comes out, you can lift it off, put it on. You can even work your, your bike, and then it locks out, and it will lock in. So yes, so if you have a little storage or a garage area, like many of I know Sprinter people do have a little garage area, the bike locks right in there. So yeah, great way to haul your bike inside your van, right. not get dust all over it like I'm getting on mine, and uh, have it secured. That's right, if you don't like you know, your expensive bike on the bumper, this is the way to do it. Yeah, 
All right, guys. So this is the next thing that I think is kind of cool. So this is Ross with Hatchet Overland, and he's built a new tent system for the Jeeps. Now, what Jeeps does this go on? Jeep JLs only. Jeep uh, JLs so only. The JLU, the four-door Jeep, since 2018. Okay. And so, but basically, what you got here is so this you you just tip, pop your top off, right? We modify the original Jeep hard top uh, so that all the windows, door seals, wiper, etc., all that is OE on this uh -huh. original equipment. The fiberglass lid is what we manufacture and also what we call a bed platform up in there we manufacture as well. We then mount that through the Jeep hard top to the Jeep roll bar. So all the weight of the camper is borne by the roll bar uh, when you're sleeping in it and when you're going down the road and so on. The lid, when it comes down, nests into the uh, rain gutters and fits tight around the front. It goes up in about a minute and it comes down in about two minutes. Okay, that's awesome. So um, you guys are going to see more of this because this is actually David, which you guys might have seen on my channel before from Amazing Life's Jeep. And we're going to do a little bit of exploring after the expo. So you'll see some videos. You're going to see this thing in action. All right, folks, so this is one of the more interesting products that I kind of came across. And unfortunately, it's a product I can't currently use right now, and I wish I could. So this is DeLon with Power Brake, and they make some really trick, awesome calipers. Can you tell us a little bit about your calipers? And I'm specifically interested in the cooling features of your caliper. Yeah, so we do something special for the Dakar Rally program. So these are this is off a Toyota Motorsport truck. And what we do is we pull the cooling system inside the caliper. So it's basically a radiator inside the caliper and it has a temperature sensing point. And at a certain temperature, it'll go back to the MoTeC system on the truck and it will then activate a pump, which then brings, uh, brings, the, brings the fluid through the cooler, through an external cooler, and it brings temperatures down from like sort of 420 all the way down to 320. Right, now that's for your racing trucks, that's right? That, that's trucks. that's yeah. crazy, yeah. but yeah. let's talk about the common man guy. Right. So so, yeah. so you have this, you have these, um, yeah, these uh, so this rotors. Rotor, for example, on a Toyota Tacoma is a world first. What we do is we do a 42 curved vane rotor. So what's important about that is it's, we want to get as much air flowing as possible over the rotor because that's what cools the brakes. So it's like a centrifugal pump. It's going to pull the air in and then we want to flowing over the rotor fins as fast as possible and as much as possible to bring those temperatures down. So and, explain these marks. Yeah, and then what we do is we have temperature measuring paint on every single rotor so that you can know exactly what temperature the rotors run to. And the reason that's important is it allows you to make a selection on brake pads. So for example, this runs from 550, 850, 1000, and then here we get to 1166. So this, if you start getting at this level, you're up at motorsport level. So we know that the temperatures are running too high on your Tacoma or Forerunner or Ford Range or Jeep Gladiator, whatever you're running. So, and then for the Tundras and the Ford F-150s, we actually do a 72 vane rotor. Again, same principle, air flowing in and getting it to flow over the, over the rotor spins surface area. And then here we have the calipers, which is uh, made out of all aluminum billet. Very uniquely, we bolt from the back. So we give as much wheel clearance as possible. So if you're running a bead locker wheel or anything like that, we want to give you that clearance. We have this big bridge over the top because a caliper wants to spread itself open hydraulically. So we want to avoid that. So this bridge stops that. Stainless steel pistons. So stainless steel transfers heat slower than aluminum. So we want to keep the heat away again from the brake fluid. We have recessed bleeder screws, so everything's hidden away if a stone or anything comes flying through the wheel, and then all everything is ported internally, so that we've got nothing sticking out on the caliper. Same thing, temperature measurements on the caliper, so that we know exactly what temperature the calipers run to. And it'll hold the highest temperature of the caliper. And then the last thing is just a really big performance brake pad, and that's why we have the bigger caliper. So we want to give you as much friction surface area as possible. Um, yeah, and it comes as a kit. It's got all the brackets, the brake hoses, everything together. Um, if you walk over here, you'll actually see what it looks like on a vehicle. So you can see here's the mounting. There's the temperature measurement, your braided brake hose. It's a complete bolt-on solution. Comes in a box left wheel, right wheel. And it's really easy to full, full installation instructions. 
Okay, and so what vehicles do you have for the market right now here in the US? So we do all the light size trucks. So we do um, 4Runner, Tacoma, we do Ford Ranger, we do all the different Jeeps. Then we do some of the full size trucks, Ford F-150. We, um, uh, we do Gladiator, all of that type of stuff. And then we've got some cool stuff. So we've got like Land Cruiser 80 series. We've just launched, launched first gen Tundra. Uh, we are about to launch third gen Tundra in about a week's time. So really a comprehensive range on what you're doing overlanding. So mainly the overlanding vehicles. Okay. So, but you guys are looking at the F250, 350 as future development? Yes. We're going to have to do something unique there because they have a very structured hub. But that's something we're definitely working on at the moment. Okay, guys. So. Uh, I'm really impressed with the system. I really wish that I could try this out on the van. Unfortunately, because I am using F250, 350 axles, I, it's not for me right yet, but I will be watching you guys. And when you guys do come out, I'm going to definitely be wanting to try these on my van. Awesome. Yeah, we're based in North Carolina. So everything's manufactured in South Africa in our own factory. But we have a facility in North Carolina where we ship everything out of. All right. Thanks for talking right, with awesome. me. Awesome. Thanks. All right, guys. So I'm at the Diode Dynamics uh, booth. If you guys follow Donald Soft Riding the West, you know he has a Diode Dynamics. Donald's followed me around a few trails. I fell in love with the lights, so I contacted Diode Dynamics. I haven't really talked about this much on the channel yet, but I have put your guys' pod lights and your flush mounts on, as well as your light bar. And I have to tell you guys, it's awesome. I haven't got a chance to show you because I haven't been out in the dark, but man, it lights up the world. So can you guys tell them just a little bit, why are your lights so good? Yeah, so the primary thing is we're, we're all uh, uh, assembled in the U.S. in St. Louis, Missouri. Um, so it's all, we're able to watch that quality control real well, get the products in, get them back out to you guys as soon as we can. Our back orders are real low right now, so we're able to get, get you guys the products. The biggest thing that we do different is our TIR optics. Our TIR optics are, allow us to push more efficiency through the optics, which gives you more light downrange. Uh, it's the way we capture all of the rays of light from the individual LEDs. They, they produce a, a crisper beam pattern, which then allows you to uh, produce or, or utilize more light downrange, uh, giving you uh, obviously better visibility at night for, for uh, what you guys are doing. Awesome. So one of the things that I did, guys, that um, was a little, maybe a little different than the average person is I went all amber. They're all amber lights. And the thing that I really noticed um, is especially with my light bar, I had a, a cheaper just white light, light bar on the van before, and it would glare off the hood so bad that I actually just really didn't find it very usable. So I went with their uh, 50 inch LED light bar with the amber light and it doesn't glare off the hood. I get good, clean, visible light. And the other thing that to me really stands out is with the amber light is how uh, much definition and contrast objects out, have out in front of me. Um, a lot of people will tell you that they're great in uh, like fog and smoke. You know, a lot of times in the summertime we deal with forest fires and smoke on the trail, but uh, also great in winter storms, like we got whiteout conditions. But just even in clear conditions, I feel like the amber light just produces a more usable and easier on the eye light. So anyhow, if you haven't checked them out, check out Diode Dynamics. I'm a very happy person with mine. It made a huge difference uh, in my front end lighting. All right, folks, I'm here with John with Red Arc. You guys know I've been using the Red Arc system in my van uh, for quite a while. I'm very happy with it. One of the things that I very much like is, is all the integration, everything's tied into one single app, one single control panel on my van. It manages everything from my solar, my shore power, and uh, charging from my battery, or charging from my alternator. And then, you know, I have the Red Vision system as well, which also allows me to monitor my water tanks, which is great because I can't see my water tank in the van, but I can see it on the Red Arc system. And it also allows me to see like what's going on temperature wise in, inside and outside the van. But the one thing that I don't have yet and what uh, John's going to talk to us about is the new inverter that is coming into the U.S. Yeah. Can, can you tell so us about that? Yeah, so we are super excited to launch inverters, pure sine wave inverters to the U.S. We've had them in Australia for a long time, really popular, everyone loves them. They're going to be available in late June. Yeah. So they're pure sine wave, which is important because a right. lot of our equipment is sensitive. And if you plug it into a square wave, 
you could damage it. You could ruin a computer or a laptop. And so the pure sine wave avoids that. We're going to have a 400 watt, 1,000 watt, 1,500 watt, a 2,000 watt, which we see here, and a 3,000 watt. So you can bring all of those creature comforts on the road with you. That's awesome. So yeah, I'm definitely going to def upgrade. I don't know what side. I'm running a 1,000 right now. I might want to go a little bit higher so that maybe I can run some things like an Instapot or some stuff like that on the road every once in a while. But uh, yeah, be checking for that. And if you're looking at building any type of battery system and you need a way to start managing that battery, especially when it comes to lithiums, yep. you definitely want to take a look at the Red Arc system. It is quality. I mean, it, it stands, it's been stands up to the test of overlanding and people out there beating it up. So I can't say enough good things about it, guys. Um, definitely check out Red Arc if you're gonna build a dual battery system. All right, guys, so we just got done with Red Arc. So I'm gonna to talk to you guys about the, another product I have in my van. Now this is not a sponsored deal. I got Battleborns. I paid for the Battleborns because I wanted something that I could rely on on the trail. So tell us a little bit about your guys' battery. Tell me why. Maybe I don't wanna run right out and buy the, the cheap Chinese lithium that I see on Amazon. Yeah, so there's a lot of compelling reasons to look at Battleborn batteries. You know, Battleborn is a U.S. manufacturer. We're based in Reno, Nevada. And we build batteries starting at the individual cell. We weld our own cell packs, and we are a true manufacturer where we're hands-on with that battery from, you know, start to finish. You know, and that's what gives us the confidence to give a battery a 10-year warranty. So when you move to a Battleborn, you're talking about a lighter weight battery with no discharge floor. So it's the full usable power in the battery itself and a much quicker charge rate than your traditional acid-based battery. So the, the advantages are huge when you go to lithium in terms of keeping you powered out on the trail, when you're dry camping, boondocking, and, and keeping you just, you know, living life comfortably. Sweet. So he's right about that. Let me tell you guys, I had an AGM before. It was a 210 amp hour AGM. I could only use 50% of it with the uh, three stage charge that battery when I was using my Red Arc Manager 30 I could charge 30 amps up to 80 percent then I had then it would trickle down until I got to um, around 90 percent and then it would start to go into well actually until I got to 100 percent and then it would go into float but the problem is is that last little 80 percent takes forever with the Battleborns the lithiums with the Red Arc Manager 30 that I'm running, it runs at the full 30 amps all the way up to 99%, and then it uh, goes into float. So when it comes to recovering your battery on the trail, it's way faster to go with lithium. And it's, in my opinion, if you're gonna spend money on good lithium batteries, um, you, you're not gonna be disappointed with Battleborns. All right, guys, I've got Eric with Geyser Systems with me. We're not actually at his booth. We're, at my van, but that's because I've got one of their geyser systems. And I think oh, yeah. this is one of the more innovative shower systems that I have seen here at the expo for oh. the week into a uh, week long overlander. Oh. It doesn't Thank take you. up much space in your van and, or vehicle, truck, whatever you got, but it's a great way to kind of freshen up a little bit on the trail. Can you tell, tell the guys a little bit yeah. about it? Absolutely, yeah, that's a really good intro. So. This is the world's most advanced hot portable shower that uses less than a gallon of water. This guy holds three liters or three water bottles worth, and that's enough to give you an eight to 10 minute hot shower when you're off the grid. So two different ways to a hot shower, but the way that I like to do it is to boil one liter of water if you've got a jet boil or a camping stove, anything like that, and you mix that with two liters of cold water and you can have a perfect 100 degree shower ready like that. And how we make the most of every drop of water is that you actually disperse that water through a scrub. So you, there's a little control valve that you open up to deliver just the right amount of water exactly where you need it, as opposed to a shower head, you know, that like right. sprays water everywhere. Mm -hmm. This is a good way to like actually get the sweat and sunscreen and dirt off right. of you. While conserving water. While conserving cause, water. Because you want to conserve water yes. on the trail. Yeah, that's the main thing. And it's really good for like smaller setups like this, because you don't need a huge dedicated fresh water tank either. Right that you can get a shower with like less than one gallon. Right. Where most showers use like five, seven, 10 gallons. Right, so what, one of the things that I, I find and um, for me that I think that this will be good is, again, um, like my shower system is built in, you know, it's kind of complicated. And, you know, when I do take a shower, like I said, I mean, it usually takes me about uh, roughly around five gallons right. of water to right. take a, a good shower. 
Uh, when you're on the trail, especially you're in desert country or places where water's not super yeah. accessible and you want to yeah. just get a, what I call a good spit bath where you can get cleaned up, freshened up, feel a little bit better. This only uses a, a gallon of water. Yeah. And so um, it's something that I feel like I can use without um, being stressed about uh, being stressed about stressing right. my water supply right. on the trail. That's exactly it, and it's low hassle too. I mean, it's lightweight, it's compact, it weighs like eight pounds when it's empty, and it makes the most of your water, your electricity, your fuel, and your time and space in your rig. That's what we're here to do: is help solve problems for people that are trying to stay off the grid and enjoy the great outdoors as much as possible. Cool. Right. So anyways, guys, you guys are going to see me using this on the on the channel, especially through the summer. Cool. Uh, it'll be a great way for me to clean up when I'm at different places. And, um, you know, I still got my other shower system, but at the same time, uh, this one is just going to add a level of convenience when the other shower system doesn't make sense for me to use. All right, guys. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that little look at uh, some of the stuff there I saw at Expo. If you guys didn't get a chance to meet me there, I will be at the Pacific Northwest Expo that's coming up in Redmond. I believe that is in either, yeah, it's in July. So if you guys are kind of planning on attending that, I will be there. So come by the booth, see the van, uh, meet with me and chat a little bit about camping and overlanding. I look forward to talking to you But anyways guys, we're going to get back to editing this other video and I'll see you guys again outside